Welcome to another Just Paint It. I'm gonna show you the items that I got from thrift stores and then I'm going to show you how I fix them up and there'll be pretty pictures at the end for you to see the final product. So I love my thrift stores. When I find a good deal, I can't, it's just amazing. So here's a mirror and it's $9.97, but it was 30% off. So it's a big mirror. See, I think it's supposed to go this way, but it could go this way. We're gonna paint that up and sell it. And now I had a couple garage sales that I went to and it was an estate sale, so a number of estate items. This is a little ceramic bowl for 75 cents with that blue on it. Blue is hot right now. This one is an enamel bowl. And it's got all that patina on it and it was a quarter. And it's got that green stripe on it. I've seen so many people on YouTube that this is red and they're taping it off and painting it green. This one's already green. 25 cents, 75 cents. Sweet deals. Here's another garage sale find. This is, I'm not sure what it is. Looks like an old fashioned bread pan, but it's all rusty and crusty. This one needs a good cleanup. And then it's gonna get a bit of a paint job, but not much. But look at those corners, how they wrap them over. I'm gonna have to look that up and see how old this pan really is. This pan was 50 cents. So I can see having three pots put in there and put it on your patio. I'm all about the garden right now. All about making the garden pretty. Which, speaking of garden, at the thrift store, at the garage sale was these Pampered Chef bread tubes. And if you've watched my channel before, you know what I do with these. But I paint these up and I use them as sedum planters out on the patio. So you're gonna watch that and I can show you a few of them that I have done and that they're growing really well. Another enamel bowl in that fun green color. It has a darker green ridge on it, but it's got lots of fun patina. It was 50 cents. This is very cottage core. Cottage core is all about the metal, the wood, the enamel, the green, the blues, and like grandma's house. Like what you would see in grandma's house. That's cottage core. So those are some fun cottage core bowls. Now this, I squealed when I seen this. This is a clock. And I don't know how old it is but it's missing the back. So the hubby's gonna have to make a back for me. It doesn't, well, I don't know if it works or not. We're gonna have to put a battery in it and see. There's a spot for a battery. But even if it doesn't work, I'm really okay with that because I just like the look of it. It's gonna get a paint job and it was $3. This was a little on the pricey side, but it might be mine. This is very cottage core. A basket. This was at the thrift store. My sister is doing cottage core in her house and I thought this basket would hang really well on a wall, put some lavender in it, maybe give it a fun paint job, maybe with apothecary. You'll have to follow along and see what you, uh, if you like it when it's finished. So this was 97 cents. That's a good deal for a basket that's gonna hang on the wall, 97 cents. All right, back to the garage sale, 50 cents for this divider tray. This, you find these in garages all the time. I really like to clean these up and paint them up and use them for home decor. So 50 cents. If you're interested, if you're interested in any of these items, they are on the paintphotographerhomedecor.com after they're all painted up. So make sure you head on over to that website and you see if you wanna purchase any of these because I'll ship them right to your door. Here is a table that I got at the garage sale as well. It's got, it's very homemade. 
It's a little side table. It was $1.50. This is going to get a sweet paint job. These are a little loose. They'll have to be fixed. And it's a little dusty. I got a really big thrift haul, so hang on guys, the painting is coming. Here is an octagon tray. This has strawberries on it. I'm not really in love with the strawberries and it is paper. So I'm gonna take that paper off and we're gonna give it a fun new look. Still probably cottage core, cause this is very cottage core. It's just not my style of cottage core. 67 cents for this octagon tray. If you do table decorations, you know your table decorations look a lot cuter on a tray than not on a tray. Here is an old man's um, toolbox. It has something in it already. Scrap them. And it's in that fun blue color. I don't know if I can save some of that blue color, but I'm certainly going to try. So this was a dollar, but I do like boxes. And when they're metal, they're even better. I told you blue was in. So here's a blue cobalt blue croc. That's a really hot color right now. So this needs nothing. It needs just a clean up. This, I think I paid 50 cents for it. The tag is gone. Here's another 50 cent item, just a metal tray. It's got the attached right there. It doesn't have a whole lot of patina on it. It says A through B. <laughs> I'm not really sure what that means. Um, but it's gonna get a fun paint job. This is a nice tray or flip it over and it's a riser for your table. This print is very cottage core very cottage core. I think I even like it. I'm going to give the frame a nice paint job and see what it looks like after that. It was $1.97 at the thrift store and it has a nice hanger on the back still. It's got some torn up paper, which I'll take that off. We'll take the print out. We'll paint that frame and see what it looks like with a painted frame and see how cottage core that really is. Here's a huge wire basket, complete with feet. It is already white, it's kind of rusty. I can envision this in a living room with blankets or pillows in it, and or in your kid's room with the stuffed animals in it. It can go like this, it can go like this, it can go like this. It was $5.97 with 30% off, so a steal. I loved it. Here is a metal, I'm all about metal today. Here's a metal candle holder, riser, however you want to use it. You could put a plate on top of here or even another tray. So this was $4.97. Little pricey for this metal candlestick holder thing, but it is really big and it's got some good patina on it. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with that yet. Gonna have to just look at that for a little bit. Here is a horse post cap. It would go on the top of a post. It was $1.97. My granddaughter, we're decorating her graduation party in uh, animals, cause she's going, to be a she's going to be a veterinarian tech. So this is going to get a paint job and see how cute he is after that. Here is a wood box. It is oval. It's got like alligator skin in red. Not such a cool finish, but I think it's gonna look really cool after. It does have a felt insert. We're gonna give that a paint job as well. And it was $1.97 with the 30% off. And one last item, this is a basket. I'm not sure what the basket came from, but I thought it was really good display, really good for the patio. It, you can put a bunch of plants in here and actually have them in a little contained spot. 
It was 25 cents for this basket. So if this is going to get sprayed, then put fun colored pots inside it for the summertime. And then one last item, almost forgot. I have this cottage core bottle, it has a finch on one side and a red cardinal on the other side. It is not hand painted. It looks like it came this way and it is makes a really cute vase. I got an allium in there right now and some false indigo. So this sits on my table because I've kind of like captured this for myself. So I really like that yellow finch. Very cottage core. You go inside your little box and your table along with some other things. Perfect. So there we got it. That's my thrift haul for the week. And we're going to paint these all up. You can follow along with me and see how they all turn out at the end. You will see them all finished. And if you'd like to purchase any of the items that you see, it's the painted photographer home decor.com. And if you'd like to purchase the paint or the IOD that I use to make these products, it's at the painted photographer.com. So thank you very much. And I'll see you at the end. I cleaned up this mirror with an old paintbrush and you can get the dust out in all those crevices with just using a dry old paintbrush. And so I got all the most of the dust out like that. But then I also came in with a baby wipe and wiped in between those areas. And as you can tell when I show you the baby wipe that it really was gross, grimy, dirty. So make sure that you always clean your products before you paint them. It will help to adhere your paint better. For the back of that clock, my husband just cut a round circle from a piece of thin board. For this basket, I used apothecary. I do really well with apothecary around here and I love the color. It's very farmhouse cottage core. Anyway, I just dry brushed this apothecary all over the basket, not hitting every single spot, just hitting mainly the high spots of the basket and then I will sand it down and maybe do some white wax. Part of thrifting items is when you have a paint color out, anything that is going to be that paint color, paint it all at the same time. So this, one of these bread tubes was going to be apothecary. So I just painted this. DIY paint can be used over wood, metal, plastic, anything, and it'll adhere really, really well to this. I also did the octagon tray and that cottage core print of the flowers and the fruit I did in apothecary. So like I said, if you are thrifting and you got a lot of items and you want a lot of the same items to be the same color, then uh, paint them all at the same time. Here's the frame. I opened a new apothecary. I used up my old one and I always use out of the lid first so that that paint doesn't go to waste. So when you open up a brand new bottle, make sure you use out of the lid first and use up that delicious paint.
For these other two bread tubes, I wanted some fun colors. So I went with Kissing Booth and Cowgirl Coral. And uh, like I said, DIY paint goes on metal really, really well. I only needed one coat. I put it on a little bit thicker and uh, I painted the entire tube in the kissing booth. And then you'll see shortly how I just brushed my brush over the cardboard to remove the excess paint and dipped right into the cowgirl coral. I don't, didn't wash my brush in between just because I'm lazy. <laughs> DIY paint can go over fabric as well. And there's a felt in this box. It was a dark color, so I decided to go with Bohemian Blue, which will cover up that dark burgundy really, really well. So I spray it with water. I am using a recycling bottle right now. It's a Febreze cool mist. And so I squirted it with water. It's just plain water and uh, went in straight with the paint. So the paint is like dyeing that fabric versus painting it. And it covers, like I said, Bohemian Blue covers any color of that felt really, really well. It's the best one that I found. So one coat did it. It just did a really fabulous job. It takes a while to dry and uh, because it is fabric and it is so wet. So just set it out in the sunshine and let it dry for a few hours. And then I painted the rest of the box with Bohemian Blue as well. The clock I painted in beadboard and I cleaned it up really well because you never know what's going to be on that wood surface and if you'll have bleed through or not. So I cleaned it up really, really well. I went in with the beadboard over the entire um, back and front sides of the clock. I did remove the clock face just so it was easier to paint. And then it was also very, very dirty on the inside of that clock face. So it was a good, good thing that I took that out of there and got all that dust and dirt cleaned up. I'm going to make a salt wash mix here and that instead of using a paper plate, I just put some cling wrap in my over my bowl and I started out with some beadboard paint and then I added salt wash to it to thicken it up. This horse that I'm going to paint is just a plastic post cap, so it doesn't have any texture to it and it doesn't have any, I don't know, character. So I'm going to make it look like it's a concrete horse. You want it to be like the consistency of brownie batter. That makes the best concrete. Then just start putting it on this plastic post and I wanted it to have a lot of peaks and valleys. So I made sure that I could see my brush strokes and then I also dabbed it and it made like high peaks. There were two holes in the side of this horse thing, so I just covered those up as well. This paint with that salt wash will dry really, really hard. And uh, so the bottom I made sure was thicker than this around the horse. I still wanted to see the details in this horse, so I put a thinner coat on top of the horse and just kind of stippled it to make it look like concrete.
Then I'm not wasting a thing. So there was some leftover textured paint. I just dipped into the textured paint and into the can of beadboard and made it stretch to cover this entire box with using the leftover textured paint and adding in some of the full straight out of the can DIY paint and it made it stretch to finish this entire box. Cleanup is so easy. Just take that cling wrap and throw it away and your bowl's perfectly clean. Bohemian blue for the outside of this alligator skin box. I touched the inside, so I had to touch that up a little bit. And uh, I just went over the entire box with Bohemian blue. I don't know if it'll be the final color, but what I didn't want is I did not want this black and red coming through. So I'm going to seal up this Bohemian blue. And then uh, that way that black and red will no longer come through when I distress it. The clock needed a second coat. That beadboard didn't cover as well as I would have liked it to, so just give it a second coat. Don't worry if your first coat is kind of streaky, just a second coat will usually take care of the problem. Beadboard covers very well from the DIY paint line and the second coat was perfect. Um, I used cake batter for this table. I thought it was that color is very cottage core. And uh, talk about not good coverage. <laughs> cake batter, it does not have good coverage when you're going over the dark stained wood. However, I love the color, so it's worth the extra effort. I don't show you all of the coats that I put on, but I put three coats of cake batter onto this table, and it was perfect. I loved the outcome. I like the color of this other metal box and mermaid tail matches it pretty well. So this metal box that I found that didn't have any character to it, I decided I would paint that mermaid tail and mimic the look of that old box. So I painted the entire thing solid mermaid tail and then I sanded down to some of the rusty metal. I had this metal candlestick holder, candle pillar holder. I'm not really sure what it is. Anyway, what I decided to do with it is use it as a cake stand for my granddaughter's graduation party. She has one small graduation cake coming with a lot of cupcakes. So this will actually have her cake, the, the small one, stand up above the rest of the cupcakes. So I painted it white. This is beadboard. I flipped it upside down and then I just flipped it back right side up and finished painting. And I didn't make sure that I had every single crevice painted. I just painted it and I'm going to distress it back to some of that metal. And this is an adorable 
cake stand. I love apothecary and I really like it with white. So I painted the inside of this box with apothecary and the outside is white. And then I will distress some of those wood edges back. So I do really well with apothecary and it is a favorite color. If you would like to find this color, you can head on over to thepaintedphotographer.com. This metal tray, I really liked the patina of it, so I wanted the rim to be a certain color, and it was, I chose Selty Kiss. And I used painter's tape to tape it up. Sorry about all the camera movement. I broke my tripod at this point, and my husband is trying to fix it, but of course, I can't wait for him. So I am hand-holding <laughs> the camera and trying to paint at the same time. <laughs> Okay, still hand holding the camera. It did get fixed eventually. This is the last one where it's going to be a little bit wonky. But I wanted to tell you that when you have DIY paint that is almost gone and you got all the chunkies on the side and it turns into like clay because obviously it's mixed with clay. I add water to the can to the bottle and I make it a really really thin liquid. And put all the sides, I scrape all the sides of the chunky paint down into that water. And I mix it up. And uh, then I let it set. What happens is because it's so highly pigmented is it becomes a wash. This is a perfect area where you can use that wash of paint. So you're saving all of your little bits of clumped clay. And uh, then I take a mister bottle and I spray to force it to drip down on these bread cans. And this is two-toning those patio pots because I'll be planting flowers in here. And it's two-toning those and it's they're really, really gorgeous. If you don't like the drippy, you can spray it a little bit more so that it doesn't drip quite so much. It'll just be more blended. And I also did the orange on the cowgirl coral. And uh, as you can tell, it's coming right out of the jar as this liquidy that it just drips right down all by itself. But I, I do take the Mr. Bottle and I force it to drip down. So don't throw that hard, crusty paint away. Use it. I did spray this with two times spray paint. It, because of all the crevices, it's just much easier to spray it. And I don't DIY spray at this, at this time. I used a spray can. Not that I like to, but it works. Then I took a piece of 120 grit sandpaper and I distressed this mirror. It was a tough job, but the results are pretty sweet. So I'm going to time lapse this for you because it took a while. I took a baby wipe and distressed the clock with the DIY paint. You can distress with water. I over distressed this clock. You won't see it here, but you will. Well, you've seen it right there. Distressing the octagon tray in time lapse motion. Distressing that cottage core frame in time lapse motion. And then also giving this cake batter a third coat. I am on the third coat and this is where it has full coverage and that yellow looks awesome. I added dark wax to my clock because I really don't like the heavy distressing. My husband says he likes it. So I thought maybe the dark wax would help. I'm not sure. Can you leave a comment if you like the heavy distress of the clock 
or if I should repaint it. <laughs> Please tell me because I'm really on the fence with it. But I added dark wax to try and vintage it up and make it look old. It helped a little bit. I clear waxed the print just to give it a little bit of protection. And I also wanted to dark wax the print and just give it a little age, <laughs> protect it, age it. And uh, so the clear wax was like a barrier for putting the dark wax on. So then I went just with my brush without dipping back into the wax and it went over the edges to just give it that little bit of age and you, it has a little bit of texture to it so you can see some of that dark wax in the texture and uh, it really vintaged it up. I do like this print. There was a couple of white spots on it. I'm not really sure if they're supposed to be there, if that's age. So I took the dark wax and I aged those white spots up so they aren't quite so noticeable. And then I also vintaged up the frame with the dark wax as well. And I love this. It is very cottage core. Can't wait for you to see it at the end. I had some bits and pieces of the winter song transfer left over. So that blue metal box that I painted up, it needed something. So I distressed it, but I also cut up this winter song transfer with some of the smaller pieces and added it to the sides of it. You can cut these transfers any way that you want. You'll also see that I cut up little tiny pieces and added them in. So if you have like stems that aren't going to anything, just add a little piece on top of that stem. So layering and all that, it works really well for transfers. I will show this entire video so you can see the process of how I worked through and adding some of those um, smaller pieces to finish the transfer.
I'm all about using up items that are floating around in my cabinet. So here's a Waverly wax. And remember, I wanted to seal in this Bohemian blue. So I had Waverly wax and I added water to it. So it was like more a glaze. And what it, that's going to do is it's going to seal in that paint, but still let me paint on top of that. So I did the entire inside and outside with that Waverly wax you, that you can get from Walmart. I actually think they discontinued it, but like I said, I'm all about using up what I have. Now I'm going to take the Waverly Wax and I'm going to mix some DIY Gravel Road into the wax and mix that up. So what that is, is it's making a colored wax. And I put it all over this concrete looking horse statue. And what that does is it just puts darkness into those crevices and gives it all the texture. You can see all the texture now because it's not one solid color. And then uh, what I did is I put it all over the horse and then I blotted, took a piece of paper telling and I blotted off some of the high spots so that it would be white again. This Waverly Wax is from Walmart. I don't sell it, but I wanted to get it out of my cabinet. I added the rest of that winter song wreath transfer to this octagon apothecary tray. It just adds a little bit of fun black detail to the bottom of the tray. Won't see much of it because you'll place your items on top of it, but it still adds a fun little interest. To make sure that the transfer goes on really well, you're going to want to seal your painted item with um, DIY Big Top or any type of sealer, not wax. Do not use wax. Use a sealer. And uh, then after the sealer has dried, really dried, not just kind of dry, really dried, then you can put the transfer on. But if the sealer is any type of wet, you're not going to have any luck with that. And if you use wax, it won't stick to the wax. So make sure that you don't have dry chalk paint. Make sure that you don't have wax. And make sure that you have dry big top. And you'll have excellent results.
I finished off the basket and the box with some white wax. I love white wax. If you haven't tried it yet, you must because it just makes everything so amazing. Okay, so this video was long enough and I used the new IOD's peony stamp on this cottage core side table. And I'm gonna do a whole video on that. So look for that in the near future. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please do so now and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. So I do have all of this in, um, step by step of how I did it and I also painted it and so that's coming up shortly and you can see exactly how I painted it in my new video. Thanks for watching Paint It or Pitch It. It is a beautiful morning here. I have a day off. I'm editing this video. It might not be perfect but I finished it in two days. Ha! If you need any of these DIY products, please visit thepaintedphotographer.com. If you'd like to purchase any of these items that you've seen here today, please visit thepaintedphotographerhomedecor.com and I'll ship them right to your door. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy painting!